Hey, check out all the room on either side of me. I'm in HD now, only on Linux in Review. Today we're going to see Ardor 2.8.11, an open source digital audio workstation with features that match some of the high priced audio editors on the market today. If you've ever used Pro Tools, the layout and feature set are very similar. The only thing that Ardor is missing is MIDI sequencing and that's coming in the next release of Ardor 3. The number of tracks and buses you can work with are only limited to your computer's hardware. There are three different edit modes and tools to grab single regions, mark a range, zoom, mark automation, and stretch or shrink the time of a region. If you're working on a track with a very specific beat per minute, you can set it and then change your grid type to either magnetic or regular. You can change how the grid's laid out by either bars, beats, measures. The mixer window is where all the input, output, and plug-in action happens. Inputs and outputs are easy to change to any software or interface jack available. There are hundreds of freely available plugins out there to get your mix sounding just the way you want it. There are several ways to view your plugins. There's the plugin manager which will give you an overall list and you can break it down into types. My favorite is by category though lists it by compressors, reverbs. One of the unique features of Ardor is the ability to put in plugins in the post fader and not just the pre fader position. You've got a true pan and not just a balance, as left and right can be individually panned. This is a really nice feature for pro audio. Let's take a look at a project I'm already working on. It's the song we heard in the intro today. It's got a lot of parts and the guitar line has been output through a pre-fader send to Rack Rack and returned through a bus. I apologize for no audio during this review as I'm having problems with the video frame rate and the audio not matching up. I'm going to show you the time adjustment tool. It allows you to stretch or shrink an audio region to a desired beat per minute. The samples are all cut to single measures. I'm going to set the grid to magnetic so that when I stretch it's easy to lock it to the beat per minute that I want. I then simply select the time stretch tool, grab the region that I want, and drag it left to right. I'm going to drag it left to right to either stretch it or shrink it, and as you'll see it matches right up to the lines. Duplicating a region is also a breeze. Select it, press D, duplicates it to the end of that region. Let's take a look at actually recording something, and at the same time see the power of jack and recording from software outputs. I've created a new track, and now we're going to fire up Firefox. Go to YouTube, and go to my Linux in Review channel. Now that it's open, it's simply a matter of changing the input on the track to the output of YouTube, record enabling the track, hit the record button and play, and play it. You'll see that everything's peaking and the waveform is capturing. I've only begun to scratch the surface in this review of what Ardor can do. There are tons more features and things that you can do with this program. I've been recording audio for about 10 years and there's a few features that I don't even fully understand. If you're the average person that just records a few tracks at a time, mixes them, throws them together, Ardor may not be for you. It's very complex, it's got a bit of a learning curve, but if you're into pro audio, you've used Pro Tools or something similar before, it should be a snap just to jump right in, start mixing, and have fun. It really is the best DAW I've ever used. And once it gets MIDI implementation, 
I can't wait to see the stock on Pro Tools drop. Join me next time when we review the successor to Ardor 2.8, Ardor 3.